Okay, to understand the law of signs, uh, we need to make sure that you have firmly in your mind that trigonometry is essentially about uh, figuring out relationships between sides of triangles, uh, their corresponding angles, how triangles relate to circles, and how coordinates can be used then to give us more information about angles. So we've talked about the Pythagorean theorem, how the Pythagorean theorem gives us a relationship between the sides of a right triangle. And if you know two sides, you can figure out the third side. We've also talked about the relationship of circles, and especially the unit circle, where the circumference of the circle is 2 pi. And from that, we can derive the concept of radians and how radians can be used to uh, describe degrees. We've also talked about right triangles on the circle so that you can create coordinates, and those coordinates are really just the x and the y side of the triangle. You, you remember you had the unit circle. We've done this a lot. And if that's a 60 degree, we dropped a line down, we created the right triangle, we found the length of this side, and we found the length of this side. This is the y coordinate, this is the x, so the length of this side of the triangle becomes the x coordinate, the length of this side is the y coordinate, and those two coordinates are by definition cosine and sine of this angle. We got that from this concept of a relationship between sides of a right triangle and the angle, and we learned about SOHCAHTOA, which is the definition of sine. The sine of an angle is the opposite side of the triangle from that angle over the hypotenuse. So when we had an angle here, the sine of that angle was the side opposite, which would be the y side over the hypotenuse. And since the hypotenuse in the unit circle equals 1, then the coordinate or the sine becomes just this side opposite. And it shows the rise on the, on the y-axis. So it is the y-coordinate and it is sine. So sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is just another way to describe, give a numerical value to a uh, degrees in it in an angle. The cosine is exactly the same thing. It is a way of describing that angle and the relationship between the sides of the triangle. Cosine on the unit circle becomes this x coordinate. It's the run on the x axis. And toa, the tangent, is the exact same thing. It is def defined as the opposite side over the adjacent side. So these were all ways of all the interrelationships between and among angles, circles, triangles, and we were able to use all of this to calculate especially these angles right here, the 0, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90, 120, 135, 150, 180. Those are all angles in quadrant 1 and 2, and their corresponding ones in quadrants 4, 3, and 4. And we could do that because of the, the special relationship that a 30, 60, 90 triangle has and a 45, 45 isosceles right triangle has. And we were able then to create this unit circle with all of this information stacked onto the unit circle. And you can see it, it deals with these special angles, 30 degrees, 45, 60, 90, 120. You can see it deals with all of the special angles, the 30 degree, because we could draw a right triangle. Not a very good right triangle, but we could draw one. And this was the 30 degree right here. We could draw the right triangle with 45s. And because we knew the relationship of those sides with those special right triangles that a 
45 degree right triangle has side x and x and x radical 2, then we could calculate relatively easily what the length of these sides are. Like for a 45, 45, this is the length of the x side, the run side, and radical 2 over 2 is also the length of the y side or the rise side because you can put it in rise and run they become by definition the cosine and the sine that's the Sokotoa part opposite over hypotenuse and in a 45 45 the opposite was radical 2 over 2 hypotenuse was 1 so it's just radical 2 over 2 now we could do all of that for these specific angles because of the Pythagorean theorem and those special qualities and rules of those 45, 30, 60, 90 degree angles and then their corresponding ones, the 120, 135, 150, and etc. But what about a 61 degree or a, a 59 degree angle? It's still done the same way. It's still the opposite. If we want to find the sine of a 59 degree angle, it still is opposite over hypotenuse. That doesn't change because we can draw a straight line down and create this right triangle here. But what is the length of this side and what is the length of this side? It's still a right triangle, but the degree is, we're going to say it's 59 degrees. We don't have a special formula for that. And so when you plug that in to your calculator and you ask what is the sine value, which is that value right there, of a 59 degree triangle, what is happening inside your calculator? And that's what I wanted to show you right now. It's kind of fascinating. Well, I don't know. I think it's fascinating. So on the unit circle, we had our 60 degree angle And this side, radical 3 over 2, and that is sine. So here's a, a free little calculator online, and I just want to show you what's happening inside the calculator when you are finding sine, and the same sorts of things when you're finding cosine and tangent, but we're dealing with sine right now. So if we wanted to find the sine of a 60 degree angle, we know that that y coordinate is radical 3 over 2. So that is a number. It's a, it's a ratio. It's a, a fraction. So if we just said, tell us what radical 3 equals that number, we divide that number by 2, and that is the decimal value of radical 3 over 2. That number right there is the sine of a 60 degree angle. So you could also do the more traditional way. You just say, what is sine of a 60 degree angle? And it's the same number, 0 0.8660, etc. So that fraction, radical 3 over 2, equals that decimal, and that decimal valuation is the representation of sine for a 60 degree angle. Any 60 degree angle, you can say that that number right there is its sine value. Now, we can do that relatively easily, like I said before, for these right angle, special right angle, 30, 60, 90 type triangles. But what's happening if we were to say, Okay, well, what is the sine value of a 59 degree angle? Well, the calculator will find it right away. It's that decimal right there. And that is the length of, instead of 60 degrees, if this were 59 degrees, that decimal is the length that I just did, is the length of this side right here. It is the cosine sine x y and that number sine of a 59 degree angle was 0.85716 and then it kept going 
but there isn't a nifty little way like there was for a 60 degree or a 30 or a 45. So let me show you what's going on behind the scenes. And that's why a lot of times students will say, just how come I can't calculate it? Well, you can calculate the 30s and the 60s and the 90s, the zeros, the ones, and all the corresponding ones, but you're going to have a heck of a lot harder time calculating every other angle. So here you see, this is a retired math professor, and he went through and did these calculations to show us what is actually happening when you punch in these values inside of your calculator. So you can see here is the 60 degree angle, and you can see it's radical 3 over 2, and that was uh, 0 0.8 something, I don't remember what it was. Uh, but here's what's happening behind the scenes when we punched in the 59 degree angle. You can see it's far more complicated and that number ended up being this value right here. Plugging in 59, sine of 59 gives you this result, but what's happening is all of this inside your calculator. That's why it's hard to answer the question, how do you get sine? So if you can remember, sine is this value right here. It is the x or the y coordinate, and it is the length of the opposite over the hypotenuse. And in the unit circle, the hypotenuse is 1, so it is just the length of this side opposite right here. And we can calculate that relatively simply for the 30, 60, 90, 45s, zeros, etc. But for all of the other angles, it's far more complex. And people start using shorthand. You just say, show me the sign of whatever the angle is. And sometimes it can become convoluted in our heads if we don't keep it straight of what's actually happening behind the scenes and realize that there's some fairly sophisticated math going on to figure out what these sine, cosine, tangent values are, but keeping it straight that they really are just the relationship between the sides of the angle that's created um, on the unit circle. And it's going to, it's the same thing. Remember sine was opposite over hypotenuse, the cosine, everything I just said would be exactly the same, except for cosine of the 59 will be the length of the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is 1, so it ends up being just the length of the adjacent side, and this ended up being the opposite side, and tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. All right, so now we're going to actually go in and do the law of sines, and that has to do with, okay, now we've got all these relationships and figured out sine and all of these things for um, using these right triangles in the circle, but what about angles that are greater than 90, and what about triangles where it's not a right angle? What, How can we solve for uh, length of side and angle values when we don't have a right triangle, and that's what the law of sines can help us with in certain situations.